So let's go back to our file and uh, we have the init DB. Uh, oops, and I have a typo here, so I have to fix that. So let's go over here. We're gonna change this to an F. So I'm gonna do F and then save. This is looking good. Uh, let's go back again. So this is the index file and I want to go to the config. So now the next thing I wanna do is to send a specific response every time I get a request. So if you go back into the index, for example, and let's make this full screen. You can see here I'm just sending some you know some random JSON with a message and everything so what I want to do is to create some class and I can now always use that class to send information back to the front end or back to the caller of the API and the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go into the source folder uh, let me collapse this so you guys can see clearer so instead of the source folder I'm gonna go ahead and create another folder and I'm just gonna call it domain and Inside of this domain folder, I'm gonna create another file. So I'm gonna create another file and then I'm just gonna call it uh, response, for example. So response.js. So every time that I need to send a response to the front end or to the caller or whoever sent a request to the API and I'm gonna send them a response. So press enter and if I open this, you can see now I have the uh, response.js and I'm gonna collapse this. And this is gonna be a very simple class. It's not gonna be doing anything crazy. We just need to have a class with a constructor and then we can call it and then pass in some values to it. So to do this, I'm just gonna say class and then I'm gonna call it response. Okay, so that's the name of the class. And then inside of the class, all I wanna have is a constructor. So I'm gonna do constructor and we're gonna pass in some information inside of the constructor. So the first thing that I need to pass in is a status code. So I'm gonna do status code and that's just gonna be a number and HTTP status. So that's gonna be like okay or internal server error or something like that. And then I can pass in message if I need to and then data. So the data is gonna be like some object that we can pass if we want. So in case we need to send in some data back to the front end or to the color of the application, then we'll be able to do that. And then in here, what I wanna do is to uh, pass in the timestamp. So you can see that I'm not passing in the timestamp instead of the constructor. It's because I don't need that from the user. Every time I call this constructor, I'm just gonna use the current timestamp so I don't need to ask them for it. I can just get it from the system. So I can just say timestamp. I actually need to call the date. So I'm gonna do new date and then call the constructor for that. And then we can do to, uh, let's do to local string. So to local string, which is also a method. So we need to put open and close parentheses. So the timestamp, which is gonna be part of the class, it's gonna come from the system whenever the constructor is created. We're just gonna grab the timestamp and then make this part of the object that we're returning. And then we have to set everything else. So this, that status code, and then set it equal to the status code. And then this, that HTTP status, we're gonna set this equal to the HTTP status. And then this, that message, equal to the message. And then this, that data, equal data okay so that's the constructor that we're gonna have so pretty simple simple class response it's not gonna be doing anything crazy we're just gonna have a constructor in there we give it a status code which is gonna be a number we give it an HTTP status which is gonna be a string and then a message if we have one and then data if we have some data so the data can be anything remember this is JavaScript so I don't have to give anything any type or anything whatever I put in the data I can put an array I can put anything it will just work I just have to be careful in what I'm passing in here. And then of course, we need to export that. So I'm gonna come down and say export default. We need to export the response just like that and then save everything.